We have risen from the ashes to school the masses. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another edition of the Scholars of Wrestling Show. I am your man behind the microphone, Scholar Jeff. Joining us this week is not the, the man of a really, really long title, a really long name. You know him. You love him. He's Scholar Tark. Scholar Tark, what's going on with you tonight? Looks like you were just trying to read out my little title on the Zoom. Yeah, and I failed, and I don't want to dignify that with any sort of dignity. So deal with it. Okay, that's fine. But yes, no longer the only Undisputed Scholar. Waiting for my Undisputed Scholar tag team partner to inevitably come back, just so I can do that glorious intro that he so rightfully deserved. Yeah, that's great. Also joining us this week, the one and only... He is the Scholars of Wrestling Party Champion, Scholar Charlie. Scholar Charlie, how's your evening going, sir? I'm no longer the Scholars of Champion World Champion, but I'm still the Scholars of Champion Party Champion. Things are good over here. That is magnificent. And speaking of moving onward and upward, we are, have to talk about the latest in the wrestling world news this week in a little segment we like to call Backstage News. Indeed, we shall go ahead once again, peek behind that counter, uh, counter, that curtain. Now peek behind the counter too. <laughs> peek behind the counter, just, oh, look, there's Jeff's fridge with all that nice alcoholic beverages in his basement. It's a counter. It is behind the counter. It is behind the counter, and that's where we get our backstage news. News. <laughs> <laughs> I messed up. I have to find some way to recover from that. (laughs) Lackluster intros, meh. All right. In all seriousness, if you're listening or watching this show in any capacity and following the world of professional wrestling, you know that as of earlier this week, Cody Rhodes is reportedly out of AEW, both Cody and Brandy Rhodes. There have been opinions all over the place running the entire gamut speculation has run wild let's bring it back home what the heck is going on with cody rhodes and where is he going to end up you want to start with this charlie or do you want me you can start with it pretty much so many different reasons on why he left and it all just keeps stemming back to him not being happy with uh him not being a head booker not making those final calls and with Tony Khan actually being the one making the final call. I understand why he would be upset about it because of the whole, like wanting to be the next generation of what his dad did as a booker. But also I'm kind of just thinking, I'm like, just do, just do what you have to do to uh, be, to entertain the fans, even if it's not in a way that you, are not particularly wanting to entertain the fans with them just flat out hating you. But what if he goes, if he goes to WWE, would this be like what most AEW fans are thinking of just him turning his back on AEW fans? No, just more of just a man who just, who just has it, who just got a child doing what think what he is what he thinks is best for his family and as a family man myself i get that all right charlie what about you what the heck is going on with cody rhodes uh, i feel that he was just like tark already uh said it he was just not pleased with his place in the company um i don't at this point feel the review would be a great match at all for him I feel that he would be just thrown through the fire and everything. And it would be like when uh, Triple H had the uh, hog pen matches and everything to make up for Madison Square Garden. Um, I do see him either focusing on the Go Big show and his reality show with his wife or doing that all and going back to the Indies and taking over there as well. Hmm. Him versus Matt Cardona. 
Yeah. Now that could be fantastic. It might, that would actually be as a former champion in NWA, that could be fan incredible no matter where he goes. But it's funny. I feel like I've gone as for me, I feel like I've gone through a lot of different mindsets and emotions and the whole nine yards when it comes to this whole Cody Rhodes situation. First, I was shocked. Like there is no way this can be real. Like how can this even happen? But the more things that started coming out, at least the things that are confirmed, because let's be real, there's a lot of things that we just don't know yet. Well, as the more things we keep hearing, the more it seem, makes sense. Like, okay, it had to have been a creative thing. Like, even though he's not making like the most money in the company, he's got to be making something decent. But hey, if that's where he wants to put his priorities, he's he's more than entitled but in the days since this announcement was first made and i'd like to get your opinion on this the more i thought about the more it occurred to me that it feels like aew has outgrown cody rhodes because lately as we've been seeing with Cody Rhodes a lot of his storylines and a lot of, especially with his wife Brandy I really can't think of too many storylines and angles that were like really like wow this is amazing we need to stop the presses everyone pay attention this this is fantastic they've been sort of average at best like a lot of what he's been doing just I don't think it's been working and fool like you said he's there's a part it must be a part of him that's trying to do what he thought dusty did when in reality for as good of a reputation as co as excuse me as dusty has as a wrestler as a charismatic person as all that stuff as a booker when he tried to have his cake and eat it too it really i don't think it really worked out that well and frankly, I don't, even with other people who are in that position of both talent and Booker, frankly, in my opinion, I don't think anybody can do that, no matter how good you are. So all that to say, I, the more I think about it, the more I think that Cody does not need, no longer needs to be that spearhead. He doesn't need to be the person to make those decisions and to be in the main event all the time, it's it's an unnecessary step. And with AEW's expansion, and with the experience they've got, and the more practical knowledge that the that Tony Khan and everyone else has, to me, it really did feel like AEW just might have outgrown Cody Rhodes. Uh, responses, gentlemen, makes sense. The only real thing I can really say about that is this. He may have also just how he was represented as a character, not where he exactly where he wanted to be. I mean, in certain aspects, I kind of see him going at that route that Jeff Jarrett did with TNA and just booking himself the, as the man, even though he got himself into a position where he can't go for the world title. He went all out, no pun intended, to make himself the be, pretty much the best of the best, the the baby face that everybody loves, even though people are were able to see through that clearly. And with him wanting to focus more on like something go big show and reality TV, in a way, people are looking at that as him slowly transitioning himself into more of what WWE puts him on. He's now becoming more of the sports entertainment type of guy. And that's one reason why I, I believe the fans really started turning on him. They're just like, well, you're, you may have, when you started AEW, when you first went through with it, you probably, you were in for the wrestling, but you were slowly becoming the thing that you, basically took a giant sledgehammer and destroyed in one on one pay-per-view. So with that all that being said, as soon as this was announced, 
again, more speculation than I've seen in a very long time regarding where he's going, what he wants to do, what he's truly after. Uh, Charlie, I know that we were talking about this a little bit before we started recording this episode today, but let's make it a scholar's quick talk. Let's let's get right to the bottom of it. In your opinion, where does Cody Rhodes go? Does he go to WWE? Does he stay on the independent scene? Or does he just do something else? What's your pick? I, I think he's going to stay on the indies and Matt work like Matt Cardona is right now, like Cody Rhodes has in the past, take over indies for a while before making his next big step. Fool, how about you? I kind of see that going the same way. I mean, if he goes to WWE, it's just, he would probably think he can bring what, what he did with on independence and an AEW to it. They wouldn't. Vince McMahon is too much of an ego to allow Absolutely. him to bring, to bring that in. If anything, he would probably just try and bring him back as Stardust or as Dashing Cody Rhodes. <laughs> like, I, don't, I, I just don't see him pulling the American Nightmare character into WWE. And if he did, it would just like, it would just basically be the equivalent of when Cesaro renewed his contract. You'll just get a three old- week, a three week, a three week push and then push down to irrelevancy, probably chasing after the 24 seven championship just to rub it in their face that the guy, one of the big names that started AEW is now going after the 24 seven title. Cause Vince McMahon <laughs> is such a dickhead like that. Yeah, that. I, I totally agree with you. The whole there's too much danger in Cody Rhodes signing a traditional talent contract. Uh, there's been some rumors that supposedly Vince McMahon loves the idea of signing him, which again, the, a lot of this stuff is unconfirmed. So take it worth a hefty grain of salt. But really, I feel like if he does go to back to WWE, if it can't be on a traditional wrestler talent contract. There must be more to it, whether it's a creativity clause or maybe some partial like booking or train or a trainer position, something like that. Something that would put him beyond the normal rank and file of the regular roster. Something like that would have to happen in order for any of this to make sense at all. But until then, like I mentioned to you guys before, I feel like I won't believe, I for one will not believe anything until I physically see Cody Rhodes in a WWE ring again. That's, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But there's there's something fishy about this whole situation. I just, I can't quite put my finger on what that might be. Just considering the idea of Cody Rhodes being a world champion just really never never really connected with me even in AEW I never even saw him as like a world champion material and if he goes back to WWE he, he's just he's never going to get anywhere close to a never. world championship never Well, speaking from one not-so-world champion to another absolute world champion, in the, yeah, that's really obvious news, it's just been announced as of today, this the day of that we're recording this, that The Undertaker is headlining this year's Hall of Fame ceremony for WWE. Is anybody shocked? Absolutely not. You, it's... We'll just say to the audience, you guys, when you uh, brought it up as a discussion, you were just thinking, oh, what's Tark going to say? And my just response was, well, yeah, it was inevitable. And yeah, I couldn't be any more happy for him. Um, I didn't watch SmackDown. Did they do like a video package for his? Oh, yes, they did. Oh, they did? did? Yes, they did. It was actually a damn good one. All right. Well, I guess I they'll. They'll most likely post it on, uh, on Guaranteed. The YouTube soon. I mean, because I've I already made it clear on this show, I don't record any Raw or SmackDown anymore. Because my just immediate response, if I have tried and put it on, is, all right, how are they going to upset me tonight? 
-hmm. And I actually did put it on, and it was just on the Usos versus, or Jay Uso versus Ivar. And I'm just like, all right, I'm already bored. <laughs> the match didn't even start yet, and I'm already bored with this. Let's so, put it this way. The video that they aired was probably the best portion of the show. Which is not surprising, considering how the talent that these guys who make these video packages do. They're, I think that's the only real great thing that WWE still has, is just that, that team that works on these uh, video packages. But yeah, I can't wait to watch it. Oh, it's probably going to be on later tonight. Maybe probably. even in the morning. But uh, yeah, I couldn't be any more happy. It's now this the question on who inducts him, which is it's most likely going to be Kane. Yeah. It's either, Kane or Vince. it's either Kane or Vince McMahon. One of my friends brought up a good point. Shawn Michaels would be great at it too. Yes. Be, I didn't uh, immediately think of him like we all agreed. Kane was the first name that came to mind, but well, you're not wrong. HBK, would that be an absolutely very suitable pick? It would be, but you would also think they probably would want to save him for when Triple H gets inducted, like not as a DX member, but as Triple H, Hunter Hearst Helmsley. Yeah. Here's a thought. Just speaking of like wrestlers who are friends in real life. After watching the Last Ride documentary like a, a couple of years ago, I real I didn't realize that AJ Styles and him were actually friends in real life. Mm -hmm. My thought is: Is there any chance at all that AJ Styles inducts the Undertaker? Yes, eh, that would be a stretch, but I would like because they are friends, possibly. I'm honestly just it just like popped in my head now. I actually think it would be quite poetic for the guy who brought the Undertaker character into the WWE oh, as the one who inducts him. I think I know. As yeah, with, with Million Dollar Man Ted DiBiase being the one who inducts him into that, the Hall of Fame, it would just go full circle. For that me, that would be a good one too. I it's can't, probably not. Gonna I wouldn't hate that because because I think only like a only really the hardcore fans know I, they would want to probably focus more on the casuals and just like, Oh yeah, they'll probably just have his brother put uh, his brother put him in. But I actually think it would be very, very poetic. If Ted DiBiase be the one who puts him in, mm. not Bruce Pritchard. I know he was his first manager, but no, Bruce Pritchard never Bruce counts. Pritchard. <laughs> Bruce Pritchard doesn't count shit. Oh, brother. Well, no matter what, I think one thing we can all agree on is that this accolade is definitely well, well deserved. Mm -hmm. Nothing more to write home about there. It's like, it's barely newsworthy. We all saw it coming, but hey, it's always What's a he damn do at thing. WrestleMania. He has to do something other than just walk on the stars and just be like, hi, people. Do the entrance one more time. You, well, take, there's take no reason why they wouldn't do the do entrance. It. Well, One it, it, no, no joke, no, no joke, no joke. Seriously, my wife said this earlier this evening. She was watching the video that they aired, and she was like, "You know what? I really wish I got into wrestling earlier so I could see that entrance in it Texas at WrestleMania in the big stadium." Don't tell me that they couldn't sell tickets to watch the Undertaker come out and do his entrance one more time. Oh, no. I, that would sell like hotcakes. Se seeing an Undertaker entrance at WrestleMania, it truly is something. To, and it's like when they're in the stadium, WrestleMania is it's just something to behold. Hey, if I, if I was anywhere I, near the Texas area, I'd buy a ticket to see that. I know, I know my wife the, would, many other people would too. One of my favorite Taker matches was against this man. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm talking about, fool. You're oh, wearing, yes. You're wearing the updated version of this one. <laughs> oh, yeah. But either way, I'm sure it'll be a wonderful addition to the WrestleMania weekend. But that being said, first, before we get to WrestleMania, we have to go to Jeddah, Saudi Arabia for this year's Elimination Chamber event. Wait. So let's stop beating around the proverbial bush here. 
This is WWE Elimination Chamber 2022. Let's kick things off with the most exciting match that everybody is looking forward to. Rey Mysterio versus The Miz. <laughs> you know you love it, Charles. Don't act like you don't. On that happy note, uh, Tarek, we're going to kick things off with you. Who do you got between Rey Mysterio and The Miz? It's actually really funny looking at this card and just thinking, wow, Rey Mysterio versus The Miz is quite possibly the weakest match on this card. Uh, I don't even know what the hell this storyline is. Oh, yeah. Surprise. Uh, Dominic, you're so tall. Are you sure you're not Eddie's kid? That's probably the best thing that came out of this program. It's the only uh, thing I remember from this program, frankly. I don't even know if they even had a follow-up to that. Was Because I think that was last week. What the hell happened this week? Between Did anything happen between Miz and Mysterio? To be, I couldn't care less about this one. Uh, the only thing I can really look at is when was the last time the Miz ever really won anything? Like his wedding anything. day in the ring, fool in in the ring. Uh, like the mixed tag put, match with his wife. Did he win that? No. Well, given what uh, Maurice came out and was wearing that night. Yeah, I'd say he's a pretty he's a pretty big winner. <laughs> Might as well with a career with a career that's just pretty much done now. He he can't go higher, he can't go lower. He's just there. He's now still making that WWE money for years now. So I'm like, who's fool. really the fool now? Let me finish my damn sentence. You have to just have a smart ass comment with everything I say. Um no, just most things. Damn it, I did it again. Sorry, done, quiet. Making me throw my pen at the camera again, damn it. Uh, it's now just the million dollar question is with all the crap they've give, been giving him like like loss-wise over this past year, do they just give him this one and be like, you got to win, good job. Because uh, hell, I don't even know what the hell they could be building for WrestleMania for him. Uh, I just now more see, if anything, them building a, something with Rey Mysterio and Dominic. Hell, possibly even them facing each other. And if they were to start that kind of program, it will probably start right here with Dominic costing Rey the, uh, the win. So I'm, I'm just going to go balls on the wall here and just pick Miz. Man, the man needs a win so, at some point. That is not... He needs, he needs a win with a, a over a big name. And what the hell is this loss would do to, to Ray? Absolutely nothing. All smart assness aside, I honestly was going to go Ray Mysterio because of the with WWE 2K 2022, or whatever. Oh, that's fair. But that whole cover that. thing happening. But honestly, the argument that you proposed makes too much sense. We're not at WrestleMania yet. We're still on that r proverbial road here. And setting up to a bigger match for a big name like Rey Mysterio, it, it makes too much sense. It, to me, it really does. They're probably not going to have him lose at WrestleMania until, unless he... Right, unless he re actually does have that match with his son, but as for for Jetta, I, honestly, you convinced me. I'm gonna go Miz on this one. What the hell were you throwing at, Charlie? Somebody's stomping on the ceiling, so I just want to. <laughs> I just see you go. go. Yeah. <laughs> so I threw my wallet at the ceiling. <laughs> Take my money. <laughs> go away Take shut money, up leave me alone <laughs> although now when you actually brought up the cover and also just thinking oh yeah it's saudi arabia the crown prince is stuck in the past what more nostalgia is that than ray mysterio so i actually am regretting my prediction because oh, don't of, do that like, to that... me now <laughs> okay i i I had remember I can't well I can't I can't switch it now it's I didn't do a coin I didn't do a coin toss prediction 
but I, I'll stick with it. But I'm now not confident at all. But at this point, I don't care. Just all right. go. It's like yeah, Charlie, it's, it's yeah. your pick. Break break our indecisiveness. Where where are you putting your bet, sir? I don't watch Raw, but I I watch the highlights. Uh, Miz has gotten the best of Rey Mysterio for the last couple weeks now. Uh, Ray is the cover of 2K22, like you guys said. A face going into Saudi Arabia. I got to go with Mysterio on this one, no matter how much I hate him. Hey, there's a very high likelihood that you could be the only one right in this in this whole scenario. So that's not on the line. But figure it's a moral victory all either way. <laughs> hey, Charlie, just look at this way. You're you catch up to Brian's uh, lead for Scholar of the Year. Nice. Just don't think about it's not only about the title, man. It's not I only know. about the titles. It's about building up those stats. I already built up those stats. I'm already there. But it's still fun for me. Now it's just more on watching you guys grow into till you finally join that mountain with me and Brian. Fight I, for I, the belts, pre- peasants. Gain hey, your it's accolades. It's not a peasant thing. Uh, I'm not talking down the title. I'm not talking down the uh, I know, pretty belt. I know. I'm not talking down anything. I, I just have now reached that point where I'm now reached that point where if I just get it again, I'll be like, oh yay, I'm the champion again. Way. But hey man, I want I mean this from the bottom of my heart. I want both of you guys to join me and Brian up here as the undisputed scholars. So if we do get more scholars on this show, Jeremy, wink, wink, uh, then you yeah. can be then you can be like the we'll be that top heel faction that just runs all over because we are the the ones that just dominate the scholars of wrestling. Something that Brian and I just do on a constant. And there it is. Hey, I want you guys to get those to get the title of undisputed scholar. It's like my the name the name's right here. No longer the only undisputed scholar. It's a good thing. (laughs) On that, I want you. I want you, gentlemen, to succeed. Now it's just the question on which one of you will make it there first. Dun dun dun. I, re- I refuse to play your Chinese food mind game, sir. Instead, I'm go- electing to move on to the next match on the card. We got Ronda Rousey and Naomi versus Charlotte Flair and Sonya Deville. I'll tell you With what. So- arm tied behind the back. That's a stipulation now? Ronda Rousey has to wrestle with an arm tied behind her back. Well, I'll tell you what. I didn't even know this match was happening, especially not like that. But yeah, I'm going to go with Ronda Rousey and and Naomi either way. Some shenanigans are going to ensue, and I'm here for it. Uh, Charlie, it's your pick next. Who do you got? Ronda Rousey and Naomi. All right. And Fool, do we have an accord? This match is so goddamn pointless. Because you got two, you got two people who are on the on separate teams: the SmackDown Women's Champion Charlotte Flair and the winner of the Royal Rumble Ronda Rousey, who in this build to WrestleMania should not lose. One of them's got to lose. The only like it's like oh let's just uh, it doesn't matter which team loses. It's either going to be Naomi or Sonya Deville, the one who either gets the pin or submission, but. It's Ronda Rousey. She's uh, she's the pop culture draw. Although to be fair, I could see Charlotte just stealing a victory and just rolling up Naomi on this one. But the way I'm looking at this, it doesn't matter what type of stipulation was given to Ronda Rousey. She's going to make Sonya Deville tap. Charlotte will probably even walk out on her or something. I don't know. Nor do I care. <laughs> All right, then. That's just that's just now my stat. That's just now my saying for WWE. I don't care. I'm going to say it every time now, because unless they find a way to make me care. I don't care. Well, let's see if they can produce something with this next match. We've got the women's elimination chamber match. 
Liv Morgan, Rhea Ripley, Bianca Belair, Dewdrop, Nikki Ash, and latest of all, Alexa Bliss. Charlie, it's your pick next. Who do you got for the Women's Elimination Chamber? Not that it matters, but I miss Raw. Uh, who enters last? Uh, Bianca Belair. Oh, but I'm definitely because thinking of my pick. The Bianca booking Bel- of that, I, as much as I love gauntlet matches, the booking of that one was just weird. Now having pretty much your big baby face as the last person to enter the match is just odd to me. Yeah. I feel like the last spot of like of elimination chamber should always be a heel. And having ba- and R- having Rhea Ripley pretty much just mow through the other challengers is another thing that just rubs me the wrong way. It's just it really is not wait, who who's predicting now? Whose turn is it to Charlie? Predict? Oh, it's okay. Charlie's pick. No, I already, I already went to Bianca Belair. Oh, you did? Okay. All right, then, Tara, it's back to you. Go. I totally zoned out. I'm like, wait a minute. Who's starting this one? Where am I? What? Day oh, no. Is it? I'm, I, know where I, I know I'm in the correct year. I'm not pulling that Charlie Haas. <laughs> it is absolutely player 2011. Again. You can't fool me. I feel like the biggest the biggest factor now is that Alexa bliss is in the match, but maybe it's just, maybe it's just also my heart because I love Alexa bliss so much because she is just the cutest thing ever. doesn't matter what character she is. She is just the, she's just absolutely adorable to me. Um, I feel like that, like her, it being, it is kind of like a red herring to think, Oh, she's in it now. She's obviously win winning it. I, the last time I picked Alexa Bliss in like a big thing match like this, turned out I was wrong. And I cost Charlie the Scholars of well, Wrestling I, Championship I, with that like, one. Like a big time match like this, turned out I was wrong. <laughs> uh, uh, it's a trap. It really is. It, <laughs> it seems like they're just... Follow that, your like, heart. I feel like this is now just more setting up that redemption story of uh, that loss at SummerSlam for Bianca Belair. Because as much as I love Alexa Bliss, I just don't see her in a match with Becky Lynch at WrestleMania as one of the high-profile matches. So I, I'm, I'm going to go with Bianca Belair. As, honestly, more, I actually really want Rhea Ripley more, especially with her being the workhorse of the gauntlet match. But who knows? Maybe somehow they'll just work something out and it just ends up being a triple threat. Rhea Ripley, Bianca Belair, and Becky Lynch for the Raw Women's Championship at WrestleMania. I actually prefer that more than a one-on-one. But that's just me. Uh, Bianca Belair. I'm going to go with Alexa Bliss because there's two women's championships. And if she, gets, if she comes out wearing the pigtail, she automatically wins. Alexa Bliss, yeah. Interesting logic. Uh, it's you, this you, is not a logical argument. This is strictly following <laughs> my following my nose wherever it goes. I'm gonna call me yeah. Team Can't Say. And your history at that it doesn't really work in your favor, fool. Yeah, but I'm having fun, so whatever. Uh, that's why next Charlie ma- will probably reach it before you did. <laughs> Shush. He is like he taunting. Taunting, taunting. <laughs> Drew McIntyre versus Mad Cat Moss. Oh boy, match of the night. Ta- Tarek, it's your pick. Okay, you to got? be fair, if, if if they actually are given time, it it's a false count anywhere match. They probably will give. Actually, this yes, time. it is, and truthfully, it, it is. It probably will be a fun match. I mean, he's not Mad Cat Moss. Isn't that bad of a wrestler? He's We're, not. He's just, he's just a silly gimmick, and it just, just does a, nothing yeah, for me. Exactly. He just has a really, he just has a really silly gimmick, and it's essentially going to be turning into a handicap match because it's a false count anywhere, which is another word for a hardcore match. No DQ, whatever the hell they want to call. So many different names for the one for one particular match. Um, but yeah, they're it's Drew McIntyre. He's probably going to be the one to uh, to actually top ro- take the title off Roman. 
because it would just be completely idiotic if you don't push them. I mean, you don't push them to that to that spot, especially with history that he has with Roman. So, yeah, Drew all the way, sword and all. I God sure hope it, you're it, right. <laughs> can't they do something to look like he, like they keep hinting at him stabbing someone? <laughs> Swinging the sword, cutting at someone. <laughs> you know, he'll just cut someone's head off, decapitate. Hell, them. even just have it be somewhere like as part of a set. Like have a Halloween gimmick thing and have a scarecrow, and Drew McIntyre takes a swing and cuts the head off a scarecrow. <laughs> finally, he, he finally he decapitates someone. Come on. <laughs> Put that sword to good use, damn it. I'll tell you what, sword or no. I agree with you. Drew McIntyre absolutely defeats Suspenders McGee. Charlie, who do you got? Drew McIntyre. And we have a consensus indeed. I love it. Next to be match. Fair, this pay per view is a very, I think it's, it's a very consensus uh, event minus two matches, really. Yes, it's this is gonna be one of those predictable but good kind of predictable cards. I hope. Next match we've got Roman Reigns uh, and Goldberg. Honestly, I feel like I'm completely turned off by Goldberg in at this point in my life. You're not it really wrong. sucks, but yeah, I, I hope Roman Reigns. This is one of those few moments where I hope Roman Reigns beats him convincingly. Uh, Charlie, it's over to you. Who do you got, Roman Reigns or Goldberg? So it has been said, so it shall be delivered. Roman Reigns will Goldberg Goldberg. I'm sorry, that is a that was a, still a fantastic line. I'm happy to go with it. Tarek, do we have an accord? Of course we do. We do have an accord. There's no way they're taking the title off Roman for Goldberg. And to an extent, I'll actually w- agree with you that I'm tired of Goldberg in the title picture. If you put him in just some kind of gimmick match against someone small time, then yeah, it's a lot of fun. Just, just like his match with Dolph Ziggler was, was amazing because it was just, yeah. it was just for fun. Just best of Goldberg. The fact that they just keep bringing him in just to put, just to say, I want a title match. Okay. You're Goldberg. You did something 30 years ago. Or you were a big deal 30 years ago. Will be. But now we're at this point where it's now looking sad. You I, I love you, Bill, but god damn it. Do stop getting in these world title matches. That's what that's what why people don't care about you. Have some fun. At least like with Bobby Lashley, it was the dumbest shit ever. But I actually had fun with his match. <laughs> Minus the fact that he destroyed the Hurt Business, which at this point, it's now just even more sad because of what how awesome the Hurt Business was. And now Vince just, just constantly, constantly just stomps on it, takes a piss all over it. Because, you know, when you get squashed to a piece of shit like Omos, your, your relevance is gone. And I just keep thinking about that meme of just the... Uh, what does Roman and the Usos call themselves? Bloodline. bloodline. The bloodline versus the Hurt Business when the Hurt Business were at their greatest world champion, Bobby Lashley, tag team champion, uh, Shelton and Cedric with their mouthpiece MVP versus world champion Roman Reigns, tag team champions, Usos and mouthpiece Paul Heyman. Oh my God. That is just a Booker's dream. Unless you're Vince McMahon. <laughs> gotta keep those Samoans looking strong, pal. Or in this case, you just gotta make the uh the the muscular the big muscular man, the big man that you're trying to push as almighty. Oh yeah, he has uh two followers. Eh, I don't care about them. Who are they to me? They're nobodies, and it's that awesome. is WWE's problem. Speaking Everybody of, is still a bunch of no are just the same level of nobodies, except for Roman and Lesnar. Speaking of big buff Samoans, we've got the Usos defending their tag titles against the Viking Raiders. Charlie, your pick first. Who do you got? 
Mm, big buff Samoans. Usos. I know, right? <laughs> big buff Samoans. All right. Tarek, who you got? The Vikings or the big buff Samoans? Uh, uh... <laughs> I know. I know. I'm right there with you. Charlie's right there with you. But somehow you got to keep it together for 10 seconds and give us an answer. Big buff Samoans, Vikings. Hmm. I'm going to pick the Usos, but not because they're Buffy Samoans like you guys are kind of – you're making me uncomfortable. <laughs> me uncomfortable. Well, we're, we're just talking it's, about big buff Samoans over here. I mean, I, I don't know. Uh, hmm. I can't – I'm <laughs> – <laughs> I'm, I'm 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 in the right universe right yes this is just strange for me i'm going with the usos and yeah as well you should now uh, we're talking next up we're talking about the ladies or something i guess we got becky lynch going up against lita fool I believe it's your pick. Who do you got here? It's pretty much cut, paste story with Roman and Goldberg on this one. Lita is just, Lita is not even a character anymore. She's not a character. She's just, I am a legend. <laughs> aren't I just so, aren't I just so happy to be here now? Cause I'm a legend. Just watch that. That's how she comes to the ring tomorrow. It's like, the fuck you rules, man. Yeah, just yelling. Just go, go walks his ring like this. I'm so happy to be here. So happy to be here. Now I'm uncomfortable. Becky Lynch. <laughs> They're not taking the title off Becky Lynch. Why is this match even happening? Brian, okay, Brian got his WrestleMania match here at Elimination Chamber. Oh no! It was he wanted uh, Charlotte and Lita. Yeah, this just shows how great that it that idea was, Brian. I love you, my tag partner. But hey, if they stick to if they keep Lita in the loop, maybe we'll get Lita versus Charlotte at WrestleMania if there's not a title change. Maybe either way, I'm going with Becky. It's already been written that there's nothing for Lita after this. Okay, uh, Charlie, I, I guess that's your is your pick then. Becky Lynch. All right, and a chord is we. Now, at long last, we've got the last match in the card. We've got the men's elimination chamber. Bobby Lashley versus Brock Lesnar versus Seth freaking Rollins versus Austin Theory versus Riddle versus AJ Styles. I'm going to go with Bork Laser on this one. I just don't see a, a title change happening just yet. But either way, the match is still going to be fun. So Bork, 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 Bork. That didn't Char make any sense. A, title, a title change will happen. Yeah, who's Brock Lesnar? Because Lashley's the yeah. champion. Oh yeah, Lashley is the champion. <laughs> I, I'm not paying attention to the card. Bork laser, bork lasers all over the place. It makes a big borky blast. <laughs> Charlie, yeah. say something so I can stop talking. <laughs> big borky blasts indeed, Jeffrey. Big borky blasts indeed. Bork sure. laser wins. Tark, <laughs> just say something. <laughs> something. Uh, get say a name. A any of the six names. I can't word anymore. I'm. I'm. I, I can't. As much as I don't want to pick Brock Lesnar, I really don't. I don't. I want them to actually do something with the rest of these wrestlers. Give some. Give these wrestlers something to do on. Rest on a two-night WrestleMania. 
card. And yet you, instead of having two world title matches, you just have one, just continuing to emphasize how much the rest of that roster means jack shit to uh, WWE. Uh Uh-huh. But it's again, Vince McMahon's biggest hard on right now for these last few years is Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar. And what better way to have him have that uh, meme of him McMahon gasming over the chair than having it be t- uh, title for title. Will they merge the belts afterwards? Probably. But I can only really say I'll be happy with that if they actually got rid of the brand split. But it doesn't look like they're getting rid of the brand split. It looks like it's just more of just feeding Roman's ego, just like he is the tribal chief of both Raw and SmackDown. That's probably what they're going for because continue this whole vendetta of being of Roman being the greatest of all time instead of actually having him earn that spot. Let's just constantly give him that. And I think that's just why I, once again, as much as I love the tribal chief character it's once again, it's just now forcing it's now he, it's a different character, but it's still the same. Let's push Roman to the moon, infinite star, He's better than everybody. And again, this has now reached that point where it's a lot more than what Triple H did when he was Evolution Triple H back in 2003. And that was the Triple H at his worst. And Roman has gone beyond that now, beyond that. Like he would be the good. But yeah, it's, it's Brock, it's Bork Laser, Brock Lesnar. He's probably going to be like, He's probably going to be like the the last person to enter, and he's just going to F5 everyone. He's going to do what uh, Braun Strowman did, except actually win. Or he's going to do what uh, Shayna Baszler did, what was it, two years ago? When yeah. she was in the Elimination Chamber? Or was that last year? No, two years ago. Two yeah, years it was ago? two okay. years ago, yeah. Yeah, they're going, to actually, and they're, they're going to do that, and it's just showing how Brock is dominant over everyone else just so Roman will look even stronger when Roman beats him at WrestleMania. I wish it wasn't going to happen that way, but I think it probably will. I just, something fresh and new and exciting needs to happen. I just don't think this is it. But sadly, it does seem quite likely now, doesn't it? But anyway. That's why, and that's why it's such a cringe to watch it when you yeah. actually, when I actually watch it tragically but all criticisms aside those are our picks for elimination chamber 2022 now we're pitching over to you our fellow fans what do you think is going to walk away with a victory at elimination chamber what the heck is going to happen with cody rhodes we want to hear from you so drop us a line all across the internet youtube comments facebook posts the whole schmear especially if it's on the twitter machines so you can follow us there. Join us in our conversation, starting with at Scholars OW for all our latest episode uploads, including this one. Or you can also join the conversation on our personal Twitter accounts. Fool, where can they reach you? Shmir? Shmir. Shmir. You can reach me looking forward to uh, Revolu- AW Revolution in a couple of weeks at the avatar and scholar charlie where can they reach you you can find me being the only scholar looking forward to elimination chamber at charlie and you can catch me doing even more fi- unnecessary finger guns at i'm robbie rage join in the conversation we're gonna like it even if the even if the pay-per-view doesn't turn out the way we want it to maybe it's it will suck show. maybe it'll be great we're It'll probably be okay. Either. I mean, I mean, or maybe it'll just be okay. radio shows have been getting slightly better. They have been. as long as they don't do the stupid bullshit ending booking nonsense that WWE is now known for. But then again, you already knew that because you know who we are. We are the scholars of wrestling and you have just been schooled. You're welcome. You're welcome. See you all at Elimination Chamber.